Hello, League City, and welcome to our Wednesday Lunch and Learn. Today, I have a special guest with me. I have City Manager John Baumgartner. John, thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure to be on uh, Facebook Live. Yes, and 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 no, we we didn't create this mess here and not clean it up before we just started to go live. This is actually here for a reason because today we're going to be talking about the upcoming budget for fiscal year 2020, which may seem really far away, but it actually is not. Our fiscal year starts October 1st, so we're preparing preparing right now uh, for and uh, have proposed a budget to council. So we're going to be talking about that fiscal year 2020. Um, wow, a lot of stuff. I, I, I'm glad you brought this book because it shows how involved <laughs> the League City budget is. And it's not like we just started this like yesterday. <laughs> how long has this been kind of going on yeah, here? The, you know, the budget process starts early in the year, February, March time mm -hmm. frame, and uh, all the departments work on what's important to them. You know, a lot of that information comes from interactions with the citizens. You know, what do they see? How much money do we need to spend on the public safety elements of it? Uh, the, uh, the public works folks, uh, you know, roads and streets and what needs the most attention. And those, those items become pretty big ticket items pretty quick. And so they start looking at what, you know, what they hear from the public, what they hear from their folks in the field is what they need. You know, 70% or more of the budget is is people related, yeah. but the other 30% is, you know, discretionary tools, equipment, uh, minor projects and things like that. And so that process starts uh, February, March, April timeframe, and then it gets vetted through our budget department, and then it gets vetted by me. Then we put together the book, <laughs> the of, budget a, the book. book of a thousand pages, and that's <laughs> the general fund budget. And it, you know, it has a total of about $140 million worth of expenditures, and wow. that's water, sewer, uh, parks, recreation, fire, police, EMS, public works, library, you know, on and on. It's just, it totals, again, about $140 million. Is what we're looking at for our annual budget. For our, for our annual budget. And then the other book, which is not as uh, robust, is our CIP book. It's not quite complete yet. It is not online. And what's CIP? I know we talk about it all the time, but that's Capital... Capital Improvement Program, or okay. Capital Improvement Project. So singularly, one project, a group, it's, a, it's the program. And so, you know, that looks at all the capital needs, and that's, you know, that's the real special projects. And, you know, as many of you know, we're working on the drainage projects for $145 million mm -hmm. worth of GEO bonds, uh, Put out for that, and so so all our drainage and yeah, so traffic a, improvements. That's, that's part of that's, CIP. That's a five-year program, and you know everybody asks you why CIP takes so long. You know it's about a three-step process. Mm -hmm. It's really a four-step process. Identify the need, uh, develop a cost for the need, and then start your engineering for that. Land acquisition and permitting, and then construction. And each one of those pieces takes about a year. The more complicated stuff sometimes gets bogged down, maybe in consensus building, maybe in permitting. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's uh, in, you know, developing grant applications so we can leverage our local dollars with other people's money, predominantly the state. Now, one of the things council has asked you to do is to bring forward a budget at an effective tax rate. That gets said a lot. Explain to, to kind of layman's term, what does that mean to yeah. folks? So the effective tax rate is a tax rate which would generate the same amount of uh, ad valorem tax dollars. That's about... Uh, $45 million mm -hmm. a year in ad valorem taxes, about 15 is used to pay debt. So at the same at effective tax rate. So that discounts the inflationary growth. It gives you credit. You can add to the uh, real growth, which is the new houses and the new businesses mm -hmm. that have come online and, you know, kind of sets you back at around zero from last year relative. And so what we do is we put together the budget. We use the effective tax rate as close as we can estimate that. And then, you know, a lot of times programs don't fit in that. And then I get council laundry list. Hey, you know, if we had more dollars, here's here's some programs. And it's usually very specific or it's one time. Some, some what ifs kind some of Some what ifs. Okay. You know, if we had all the money in the world, these things are, <laughs> yeah. these things are important uh, to the departments, you know, theoretically to the community to either help us provide better services or add a new program. And uh, then council makes some choices there. Last year, the budget uh, was actually set about uh, three half a cent mm -hmm. less than the effective tax rate. And we don't get that rate until usually end of August, right? We don't get it till the end of August. So I, Angie Steelman, who's our budget officer, director, mm -hmm. she and I try to 
not my word, wiggling on a number <laughs> that we think is, is close. This year, we're looking at a tax rate, proposed tax rate of about 55 cents. That's down from 56.38 last year. Okay. And, uh, and, and see, and see where that goes. So, but in, in, again, the tax rates set up of two components, there's a operations and maintenance components about 40 cents. And then there's a debt service component that's about 15 cents. 15 cents. So I want to put up a graphic now actually have some important dates because, okay. um, we do want public input on this budget. It's, that's extremely important, um, that our public gives us their feedback on, on what we're looking to, to spend our dollars that's on. Right. So, uh, council officially got the budget book yesterday. Um, but we'll be having a series of workshops coming up, uh, throughout the month of July and into August. So the first one is actually Monday, July 22nd. Six o'clock over at the Civic Center. A variety of departments are going to be um, discussed then. So any, if you, if Parks and Library, if that's of interest to you, Public Works, that includes water, wastewater, fleet, line repair. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the entire Public Works Directorate. Uh, and then also the city staff itself, the council, city manager, city secretary, city attorney, and city auditor uh, that have a budget. So that session is going to be focusing on all those departments. And then on Monday, July 29th, um, that's when we're looking at police and animal control, the whole fire directorate, that's fire, fire marshal, EMS, uh, communications, utility billing, planning and development, IT and facilities, human resources, uh, and employee benefits. That's all on Monday, July 29th. Um, and then that capital improvement plan that you talked about, we're going to be discussing that on Tuesday, July 30th. So those three dates, the 22nd, the 29th, and the 30th of July, those are all at 6 p.m. Uh, at the Civic Center. Total uh, open meeting, public's invited. And how, do, how does that normally shake down? We, we have a big table and, and, and folks are, you yeah, know, at, the, answer questions. At the Civic Center, this is where we introduce the budget to the, to the mayor and council. There's always time for public comments, uh, either at the beginning of the meeting or at the end of the meeting. Uh, but it's meant to be the work session where council asks very specific questions of, you know, where did you get that number? What's that program? Or for? why do you need this? Or, or why, why do you did... think we need this? Correct. Yeah. Cor correct. And so that's uh, Monday, July 22nd, Monday, July 29th, Tuesday, July 30th, and then a special work session on Tuesday, August 6th. And then there's also a public hearing on August 13th. Yeah, August 13th is an important day because that's when, at that point in time, you know, we feel like council has has recommended all the changes or ads or things they want different than in the book than what we presented. And so that's really kind of a final picture of what what they've come forward with, you know, kind of a compromise between the two of us, uh, city, city, and of course, council, and then, yeah. you know, government, you know, citizens can weigh in, yeah. what's missing, what needs to be added, you know, that kind of thing. Correct. Yeah, what's important to the council, we need to work on something, and then, you know, usually we present the budget for the first reading of adoption towards the end of August, and then hopefully final adoption at the end of September. So there are several opportunities for the public to comment on. Uh, if you think we're not doing enough of something, or if you think right. we're doing too much, this is the opportunity to get involved early and, uh, and, partic and participate in that. So we will be having all of those um, work sessions and public hearings posted as events here on Facebook. So those will be those will be up shortly. Also on our website, leaguecity.com, we actually have a little cheat sheet kind of that we're handing out at city facilities that you can pick one up or just grab one off, uh, you know, go to the internet to our website and grab one. Um, Obviously, we've talked about being a growing city, um, and so every year we have to add a little bit more because as we add more population, you know, these ser the services we provide to our residents, you know, we have, of course, a lot of this budget moving forward is is for staff, but is there anything that stands out for you that 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 is, is an ad, you know, moving forward or an addition or something different than what we, you know, last year or previous years? Well, the council gives me a number of goals. Mm -hmm. uh, through the annual evaluation process. And one of those goals has been to maintain emergency response mm -hmm. time. So a couple of years ago, we started funding for a fourth ambulance. And so this year's budget includes two, includes, uh, two in additional paramedics. So that would be six paramedics to, to total to enable us to run an ambulance 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. So this is the final step you know, of that plan. Of, of that plan. There are some enhancements to some of the recreation programs. Uh, many of you that have kids know that the summer program at Hometown Heroes gets full. It gets full mm -hmm. quickly. Uh, that department has proposed uh, offering a second uh, 
program perhaps at one of the schools off site in, a, in probably on the west side since oh, okay. here is on the east side okay. Yeah, we've heard that from parents that we, we want to get into your summer camps, but they fill up pretty they quickly. Fill up pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. Now, a lot of the summer camp is offset with revenue, not completely. So there's a you know there's a little bit of, of need there, um, but there's a there's approximately 16 new positions. So we have about 600 employees. So if you think yeah. about, you, know, you have inflationary growth of a, a couple of percent a year. You have building growth of about three percent. You know that's about five percent in cost increases. Per year just from that and we grow you know at a rate slightly less than that of course you would expect that some economies of scale and, and right. that kind of thing so uh, so, so a lot of it is, is human capital which is which is extremely important to us as a city you talk about it all the time that our our greatest asset is our people our people They're yeah the ones that make things happen are the ones that you the public have to interact with on the street if you need something done you see something not being done call us and we send our folks out there to take care of it Absolutely. So, uh, as the city manager, what's the hardest part of putting this budget together? Well, Besides, the hardest, <laughs> the, the hardest part is balancing the needs of all the different departments. You know, I would, you know, you know, suggest that there are more needs and wants out there than there mm -hmm. are resources, and so every year you have to make some judgment decisions on uh, maybe to give a partial program instead of the whole program and all the different competing interests. And so, you know, you got public safety, you got operation needs, and you just got internal, internal support. So there's no easy piece to this. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, the decisions have to be made. And we, again, we bring a budget forward within, within the parameters the council identified in, you know, the three years that I've done this, we've brought a list and, you know, sometimes they fund part of it. Sometimes they don't fund any of it. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add before we're actually almost wrapping up on our time? Anything else yeah. you want to add? You know, I think, you know, everybody pays a lot of attention to the tax rate. Yeah. And so we've done a little bit of analysis on tax rate. And, yeah, uh, we actually have a slide. If I can get Sharice to put that up, yeah. who's helping me here, which is uh, it has our homestead exemption or our fiscal year total tax rate, because a lot of folks. We, for, we, yeah, we, we, we all see tax bills go up. Mm -hmm. You know, we're blessed. We live in a great place to live. Our appraisal values on our houses go up every year and you know so people, what has the city done to help mitigate that and our tax rates are just a piece of the a piece of the total picture in 2010 our tax rate was 63 cents and our homestead exemption was 10 percent. and that's per 100 dollars that's of... per per one per 100 dollars and so systematically through the last uh 11 years our tax rate has gone down from 63 cents to 55 cents We've also increased the homestead exemption from 10% to 20%. So that makes an, if you have a homestead, the effective rate is closer to 44 cents because you get those deductions. Right. And, and so that, you know, that's compares to the 2010 rate of about homestead rate of about 56, 57 cents. So again, we've been pretty systematic about dropping the, the tax rate incrementally. One of the challenges we have this year is Fitting in the bond sales yeah. within, the, within within the tax rate, you know, obviously we're going to use some of the quarter cent sales tax to help offset the bond cost. But there's a you know tremendous uh, demand to get things started. Again, that's a there's a process to do that, and so council has asked us to speed up the designs to get those moving, and so we're trying to push those dollars forward. Again, that's just a piece of the tax rate. So, uh, so again, look at what's important to you. Ask right. yourself, you know. Uh, what's important to you as a citizen programs processes, you know, can you, you know, your streets in good repair Do the fire and police come every day. Do you, you know, appreciate the parks and rec programs and if you've got input uh, good or bad. I encourage you to either send me an email or give me a phone call and we can certainly talk about it and we can put it out there. So and, and he and he will answer your phone call and answer your email. I know I know that for a fact. Uh, does an amazing I, job I of getting, getting back to our residents in a timely manner, and they always say he emailed me back. He called me back, and I'm like, well, yes, of course. That's what John does. Yeah. So uh, very good point. And we and we mentioned those workshops coming up. You're welcome to come and kind of watch behind the scenes as council asks questions. And like you said, you can you can get up at the end or the beginning to make public comment. Um, that's Monday, July 22nd, Monday, July 29th, and Tuesday, July 30th. It will be all on our website at leaguecity.com, and we will be posting those public uh, meetings or those work sessions rather on Facebook. So thank you for joining us today, John. Very, very insightful information. Budget's complex. Always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, thanks everyone for watching this Tongue Tied Wednesday Lunch and Learn. Stay tuned here on Facebook and we'll give you the latest information on that weather and the golf over the next couple of days.